Now it's kind of frowned upon to talk about your salary information, at least from what I've seen in the industry, but I do think it's important, at least for your first job, to establish a baseline for a major. So I got my degree in mechanical engineering, so I thought it would be interesting to go over my first mechanical engineering job, the salary, how I liked it, all that fun stuff for you guys. Now I'm in the semiconductor construction industry. I know that's a mouthful, but it's also known as microelectronics, advanced manufacturing, all that stuff. It's where you basically make chips that go into your computer, phones, all that good stuff. Now who dominates this space? Well, Intel, and that's who I work for now. But I'm not gonna be going into Intel stuff, I'm just gonna be talking about my first engineering job. First, I wanna go over my formal education, so exactly what grades I got, all that stuff, because it will impact the amount of money you can make out of college. Then I wanna go over my first real mechanical engineering position and kind of talk a little bit about that. And then lastly, I wanna go over tips and tricks to get your first engineering job out of college. If you're new here, I'm Liz, I'm a data science manager at Intel, and I talk about data science, engineering, and navigating your 20s. So if you're into that, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump into it. Okay, so I graduated valedictorian of mechanical engineering in 2019, so only a few years ago. My GPA was around, I think it was a 3.98. I also minored in math, and then I won the Dean's Scholastic Award, which is given to one student who like represents everything as far as like volunteer work, um, grades, and leadership skills, I think were the three criteria. So I'm on the plaque. So if you go to University of Portland, you can go find me. I'm near the water fountain, but it's kind of a cool award to win. But again, it's just to show that I was very successful in engineering school prior to applying to jobs. Okay, so my first job, I was, I think my title was an estimating engineer one. And that was at J.E. Dunn Construction. And I got it when, it was 2019. Um, I interviewed back, I think in like February of that year. And I was 22 years old. So that is the timeline we're talking about. So straight out of college, 22 at the time. And I was being paid, I think I signed that position at $65,000 was my base salary and then $1,500 for a signing bonus. Now you get to keep the signing bonus after two years, but if you leave like one year in, you have to pay half of it back. So that's how they kind of get you there. But that is, and that was offered to everyone. So I think there are certain companies that have policies where if you're a new graduate, they just baseline everybody at the same. They don't care if you're like a fancy GPA or not, or valedictorian or not. So it's just to keep the playing field level, I guess. But some companies don't do that. So it really depends on what company. Okay, so how did I get this job? Um, I actually was on the Engineering Advisory Council. I was the president of the Engineering Advisory Council. So I was like the person who went around and was like, okay, we're gonna veto which classes and stuff like that. So they asked if I could give out the Business Journal Awards for Portland's Business Journal Awards event. And there was gonna be a lot of companies there. So I had to give a speech and then I had to give out some awards, which is actually really nerve wracking. But there was a guy there who said, hey, you're a mechanical engineer, we hire mechanical engineers, why don't you check out our company? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, not thinking that I would, <laughs> but I was also like, oh, maybe. So I sent in my resume um, to that company and he flagged it down and that's how I got initially interviewed. Okay, so what was my actual position? What did I do day to day? So my job was to associate cost with different things in advanced manufacturing. So it took a lot of knowledge in electrical, mechanical, civil, like literally every discipline you could think of, but specifically like you would need to know information about electrical substations from gas systems that you would use, chemicals, exhaust systems, basically everything engineering. <laughs> now I was either at a desk or I was out in the field in like a hard hat and boots. And that was mainly to work with superintendents. I would read the blueprints using a software called Bluebeam Review, which I got really, really good at. And now I teach a class on Skillshare, so check it out. Because I'm like one of the only people who actually teaches a class on Bluebeam Review. I don't know why there isn't enough information out there. Everybody in construction uses that software, but I will link that below. But anyway, I would read those drawings and then I'd go out in the field, take lots of pictures, work with superintendents. I'd also cost. Uh, apply cost to everything, um, try to bid on work. 
It was a really fun job, actually. Now, the best part was actually the people, which is kind of shocking because you're like, oh, you didn't enjoy it, it's not your passion. Okay, I'm sorry, but work is for money. Like, I mean, I enjoyed it and I found a lot of pride in my work because I liked doing things well. I wanted my work to be like the best work. I didn't want to be second best. I wanted my work to like stand on its own, but the people is really where it's at. Because construction, you get a lot of normal people. Because if you deal with engineers, they're like engineering people, you know, they're boring. I mean, I know I'm an engineer and they just don't talk very much. They're kind of, you know, to themselves. I mean, I'm stereotyping here, but you, you get what I'm saying. But construction, they like to drink. They like to go out, they like to have fun. So I would go out like boating with friends. A lot of it was male, male heavy. So it doesn't matter because I have a brother and I'm best friends with him. So I get along with guys perfectly fine. So a lot of the guys and I would go out like to bars, we go, I mean, it's just, it's just a good time. You meet a lot of people, boating, all that stuff and just hang out or just being goofy in the office. My first tip is to get an internship. I think that it will set you apart because you have working experience. I did my internship at NASA Ames. I was a research assistant. It was really awesome. I got to travel to California. I got to sit in one of their little simulators. It's, it was good. My next tip is to get involved. Now that means to be on a council or be president of a council like I did when I was the president of the engineering council or be involved in clubs. Like, or sit around at like hackathons. I did a ton of like those little um, create-a-thons or whatever, where you have to create something in a short amount of time. A lot of those companies just hang out around those events and then you just chat with them. Like Heister Neo was at almost every one of those events. My next tip, and this isn't really to get a job, this is like while you're at the job, is to be friendly with people because in about a couple of years, people are gonna start to disperse all over the place and then they could end up hiring you later on or recommending you to their hiring manager so you just want to be careful and just keep all bridges very nice and non-burnt now that was my first ever engineering position so if you want to know more about my position now which is at intel i will link it here otherwise i will see you guys next time